What's up YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about T5 transmissions. As I, you guys all know, I built some pretty killer little T5s. But there is a tip of the trade that I do wanna show you. So if you're curious to find out what we're talking about and you're just interested in the video, make sure you stick around, like and subscribe that button below and let's get on in. As you guys all know that I've been messing with T5s for a number of years and uh, you know it's been something that I've been you know it's kind of a skill that I've acquired over the years. I want to give a huge shout out to Hanlon Motorsports because actually Bob Hanlon the owner of Hanlon Motorsports was the, kind of the guy who taught me how to rebuild T5. Now he didn't show me in person how to rebuild them but he used to offer a DVD years ago. The teardown, the inspection, the assembly. So I do encourage you guys, I wanna learn how to rebuild a T5. It's best just to learn yourself. Get a book, get a DVD, and just, you know, just learn yourself. This is mechanics, and this is stuff that you need to probably learn, you know, on your own. So that's kind of how I did it. The question at hand is, how do you convert a four-cylinder T5 to a V8 T5? Now there's a lot of stuff on the internet, there's a lot of information on how to do it, but I'm gonna show you briefly today on what you're actually looking at. If you got a four cylinder transmission or you were sold one from years ago or, oh, this is a V8 transmission, but it really wasn't. One way that you can actually make it a V8 transmission as a, you'd be surprised on how many of the parts actually interchange. So I did cover a video about this subject, as you can see right here. It didn't get a lot of traction because it was a video that's, you know, th this type of how-to videos aren't something that a lot of people, you know, are, are interested in. It's not very entertaining, but it is educational and it is something that's gonna be around a long time. So it definitely has its place. Like I said, I'm only gonna briefly explain this stuff. So right here on the right, you have a four cylinder transmission that's disassembled by cousin Paul over there. And over here, you got a V8 transmission that actually came in that was in pretty poor condition. The one thing when you're converting a four cylinder transmission to a V8 or using parts interchange Changeability cases, the top plates, and the rear tail shafts for Fox Body Mustangs 8693 are all the same. I mean, yeah, they have different casting marks or whatever, but they all interchange. And another one of the items that you would actually be surprised in is the main shaft. The main shaft is the same V8 or four cylinder. It doesn't matter. They have the same output, they have the same hubs for shifting, and it's all the same. The one thing you want to make sure you check this tip is usually something that can get beat up really bad. You see how there's a this V8 transmission was ran really low on fluid. As you can see here, how dark it is or whatever. Now, like I said, this isn't gonna be a video that actually shows you how to rebuild a T5. That's not what I'm here to do. Um, again, if you wanna learn how to re rebuild a T5, go grab a book that, that shows you how to do it. There's plenty of really good information out there and there's a number of good YouTube content creators out there that's actually went step by step on how to do it. It's really not that difficult. All you really need, some basic hand tools and a press for the most part. But going back to the main shaft, like I said, it's the same. You can see this lip is tore up, so this needs to be re-tipped. This one's in good condition so I can reuse it. So what you're looking for, and I wanted to hit this up really quick, just to make sure the spline, I got a good yoke here. So you wanna make sure that the splines aren't, you know, aren't bent. And of course you always, I've, I've actually found a couple of these that have been cracked before. The, the big, the big hubs you can actually press these off but so say you bring in a v8 transmission it's all beat up it's 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 not uncommon you got it's been ran low on oil it's got broken gears i mean like i was just saying this v8 when it came in it was in very poor condition even the bearing race got messed up this case could probably be salvaged but what i had was a four cylinder transmission so what we did here is we bought a v8 gear set now you can buy these V8 gear sets as a complete set for like 300, 400 dollars. I mean, they're not made super tough. You know, they're not like OE. OE is always a lot stronger. But I got a counter, I got an input, I got a second gear, I got a first gear, which I really didn't need, and I got a third. So I got all the gear sets that I actually need to convert this four-cylinder transmission to a V8 because the four-cylinder actually uses, like I said, the same tail, the same top plate in the same main case. So real quick, I will show you fifth and reverse are a little bit different, but that doesn't really matter when you're converting a four cylinder to a V8. You just basically need the larger gear set and the stronger gear set. The only things you really need from a four cylinder trans is the main shaft, the case pieces, and of course the what I, what I like to call the hard parts, like the sliders 
and you need the for the fifth and reversed because you could actually interchange that stuff. So, so if you, if you are unlucky, you find out that your, your your Fox body at some point in time had had a four cylinder trans put in it. It's got a really steep gear. There is ways to convert it. All you really need to do is buy a gear set for the most part. So that's how you convert a four cylinder transmission to a V8. Here's the other caveat. One of the other things that you have to change that you gotta make sure that you order is the bearing retainer. Now, I always like to opt to buy the cast iron bearing retainer. It helps with strength of the transmission. And the aluminum one usually isn't very good. They like to break or whatever, but you can see just by looking down on that bearing race. See the difference in sizes? They don't really repop this four cylinder bearing retainer. So it's a tough one to get even in good condition. It actually is the same as the SVO. And the V8 one's cast iron. So that actually adds a lot of strength to your uh, T5. And another thing I opt to always buy with my rebuild kits is the rear counter support plate. This, this billet piece that goes on the back of the counter shaft. Again, guys, like I said, this is really useful for people who have, you know, if you got a four cylinder transmission sitting on the ground and you want to spend, you know, and it needs rebuilt anyways, it's probably really a good idea to just go ahead and buy the uh, gear set and be done with it and just transition it over to a V8. Like I said, the fifth and reverse, it's gonna be a little bit different than a normal V8 would be, but it wouldn't matter for the most part. The gear ratios are, since we're using the four cylinder box, the reverse will be fine with its gear. So like I said, it's all pretty much the same. This is actually very useful information for those people that want to, they get stuck. I don't know how many four cylinder transmissions I bought or how many Fox bodies I bought that's actually had a four cylinder transmission in it and it's kind Kind of like a booby prize when you actually when you actually bring the car home because you think you got this this hardcore v8 transmission or whatever and then you find out it's just a it's a a wimpy little four cylinder trans so i mean they they work four cylinder transmissions work you know it's not optimal so we'll take a real quick look i got most of this from hanlon motorsports uh, we'll take a quick look at this uh, and you can see for yourself i mean this is a v8 input shafts they look the same and input shafts considered the fourth uh you know the fourth gear but you can see here the four cylinder one is considerably smaller if you actually physically look at it. You know, obviously this is the four cylinder side, like I said, on the right. You can also see that the third gear is a different size as well. Just by the comparison, it's hard to do this with one hand, but bear with me. If you actually look at that, they're actually a different size. They're a different size gear. Using a four cylinder gear set or mixing and mashing V8 gears, that, that, that don't work, that don't work. So don't even try to do it. Now you can still reuse your overdrive and you can still reuse your reverse. You know, if you're using the four cylinder case, not a problem, but you still have to buy, you know, a different first, second, third input and counter to put it all in there. But like I said, everything from the four cylinder can just convert over. Well, outside of the bearing, of course, you still need the V8 bearing retainer. And like I said, at that point, you should probably just be putting that support plate on anyways. And you know, you can get away with that. I mean, for good daily driving or a good lightly modified or stock Mustang, that shit will work, man. So this information is particularly useful for those guys that want to learn how to buy, uh, rebuild a T5 that just don't know about a T5. Or like, even if you're just out there looking for a T5, might catch a four cylinder one, uh, you know, for cheap or whatever, you can convert that thing to V8 couple hundred bucks in a gear set, as long as it's not all roached out. So this is particularly useful for those people that are looking to do that. So outside of that guys, um, we're gonna go ahead and slam this T5 together. This isn't a how-to video. We're gonna put the, I'm gonna put it together in front of you and then we'll be done with this video. So uh, stick around, listen to some music and maybe I'm, you know, I'll pop in and show you some of the, uh, some of the differences real quick, you know, as, as I'm building it. So. <laughs> I did want to mention as well that the first gear sleeve is still the same. The little shim here, the sensor, and the little sensor plug, the speedo gear, all that stuff is still the same uh, V8 or four cylinder, including, but not limited to all the synchro stuff. But like I said, all the bearings are a little bit different and the gears are different size. So we'll continue rolling. I'm just gonna go ahead and slam this together for you. All right, so I only use the Tremec rebuild kits. I usually get these from Hamlin as well. This is all the V8. Uh, bearings and, and such and new synchros that I do for rebuild. So, like you see me doing over there, I like to lay everything out and make sure, you know, you put a new sleeve in for the yoke. I usually put a new yoke on and that's about it. I mean, there's pins, there's synchros that need to be soaked in oil. This is a pretty good little setup, so yeah. I wanted to show this real quick before we went on a timeline. This is all going in the trash. Take 
take very long. We got the uh, main shaft already done. Like I said, all those gears go right on that main shaft, no problem. Just like a four cylinder, you know, that's pretty much the same thing. So we're gonna move over to the uh, main case, get the, the new cluster in and uh, pretty much start finishing up this trans. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top, so you better back off, I get lost I'ma stay loud, stay proud, never running out, never heading south I'll be spreading out, call it word of mouth, can't put me down, I'll be getting loud You can never doubt, not what I'm about, have your fucking cloud, it be raining now I keep making sound, go another round, bitch I'm legend bound, you can't stop uh, me this now This is probably one of the most important parts of transmission rebuilding, uh, to be honest with you uh, This is often over overlook but I just pressed it in and I didn't get it on camera or whatever but there's a little sleeve in there at the end of the, your tail shaft housing and we're about to check the sleeve right now with a yoke that we know works and you can see how tight this is look see that but that's okay see that it's starting to go in boom so this yoke you soak is used too but it's got a good sleeve on it that's supposed to be that tight. This will keep, this is the first part of this transmission not leaking. This, that sleeve in there is the most important part. And the only way to change it is to take the tail shaft housing off. So I wanted to show you guys that real quick. I was gonna put that in a short video and I probably still will because I know not everybody, not all you guys will watch this, but that's a little sleeve in there that little that has to be pressed in and this seal are the most important. Like I said, you can't get to that sleeve unless you take the tail shaft housing off. And I did put a new O-ring in here because they like to leak from here in the middle too. Let's get back to work. We're pretty much at the point now where we're gonna start slamming everything together. getting towards the end of the build uh, you see these aftermarket you know bolts in here it's a nice little new hardware setup everything's good to go but one of the little tricks that I do is I always got this makeshift <clears throat> shifter that I'll never probably ever use and I, I go ahead and I mount it on the transmission and I'll go through some of the gears just to make sure everything's shifting the last thing I got to do is shim it and the transmission is done at that point so but before we shim it we always tap on the, the rear tail kind of get it the seat you know, turn it around, turn it. Like I said, this isn't a how-to, but this is a couple of tricks that I do. You know, just to get it to seed in there. Probably feels about 30 or 35 there, but we're gonna go through the gears real quick. There's first, there's second, there's third, fourth, there's fifth, there's reverse. Didn't wanna go in there for a minute. That was reverse, nice and tight. So we get pretty mad at it just to make sure she shifts because you know that's the way it's going to be in the car. And we're going to go ahead and shim it up real quick and then we'll talk after that. So my end shim ended up being about 28. I got a 29 in there. A little bit of preload. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to lock this down. We'll talk here in a second. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top, so you better back off Alright YouTube, I know that this video went a little bit long And I wasn't really going to do any sort of how-tos or whatever, but you know what? I always like to stop and uh, take a break when I'm on the time lapse, I apologize about all that But there you have it, as you see, it is a V8 transmission now It started as a four-cylinder transmission, now has ended up as a V8 transmission Again, this is really useful information for those, you know, as we get into the restoration of the Fox bodies and, and and getting into the oe parts and the replacement parts and stuff like that this 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 sort of knowledge is going to be very imperative because you know trying to do the resto mod or the restoration part of the fox body you got to know what's going to interchange and what's not if case you need some parts and one thing i did want to caveat real quick before we leave which kind of is a pet peeve this is not the t5s identification the identification plate is on a little silver tab that's on the side of the transmission this is just the main case number 
this is just a tail shaft number. So keep that in mind when you're looking for a uh, transmission. Here's a, here's a tip. World-class transmissions have the bearing that looks like this. If it has a freeze plug, it looks like that's a non-world-class transmission. And if you put a 17 millimeter wrench on the tip of a V8 transmission, it won't jingle. On a four cylinder transmission, it's much smaller. So this is like a 17 millimeter wrench. So a couple real quick tech tips on the way out. So guys, if you enjoy the channel, you enjoy me bringing these how-to videos, just hit that like and subscribe below if you haven't already. Membership, club membership below, hit that join button to check that out. Uh, check out the merch shelf for some t-shirts. But outside of that, guys, I appreciate the watch time. I will see you guys soon in the next video. Stay tuned.